where Paladin seems to excel. Yeah, I agree. Anyway guys, hello and welcome back to Clash of the Titans. Uh, this is the final qualification stage round one or round five. Uh, game number four between the Viper and VG Paladin. Uh, score currently lies at 2-1 to the Viper. I hope I updated the score bar at the top. I don't remember doing it, but it's been a while since the last game. Um, so uh, up to the north of the map in blue, we have got ourselves the Viper. And over to the bottom of the map in red, we've got VG Paladin. It is a Japanese Civ War on Arabia, which is an interesting one. Japanese, a civilization that I don't really see that often in competitive, to be honest. Uh, Japanese, they do have a infantry attacks faster bonus, but it only kicks in from Feudal Age. It does not start in Dark Age. Uh, standard gameplay by Japanese on Arabia is to do a dark rush mm -hmm. uh, with the militias and then go into either archers or fast castle to crossbows. Then boom and do a mixed skirm and uh, arbalest with rams or trebs. Yeah, of course, uh, there's always the possibility of upgrading to man at arms as well if you've got plenty of militia left over. Of course, the attack bonus, uh, attack speed bonus, as you say, and uh, obviously, if you've got those militia left over, always worthwhile to do that. Um, but yeah, would you say it's always worthwhile? Uh, not always. I suppose it depends on the, on uh, if you can get in, if you can actually hit the guy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've seen games where two players have drushed. Um, for instance. Oh, what map was it? There was a map where um, there was like a dried up river in the middle and um, there was deer there to do with the Forgotten Empires or something. And um, players would do, a, like with Japanese, they'd do a drush, but they'd upgrade to Man at Arms and take down the barracks really quickly. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you've got enough Man at Arms and you can take down their houses pretty quickly or you can take down their walls pretty quickly, uh, I suppose it depends on how they've walled and how close to the TC their walls are and such. Uh, one thing to consider also Japanese, the buildings, the lumber camp and the mills, mm. they cost uh, half, so 50 wood only. Yeah. Uh, something I experimented with and what worked very well was whenever I would get Japanese, I would make two lumber camps instead of the one and have two villagers on each lumber camp. This makes for a perfect uh, uh, lumber efficiency. Yeah, lumber efficiency really gonna add up over the length of the game of course um, absolutely so if you uh, really this is something to uh, experiment and play around with I mean so far my experiments have been great instead of making just the one for the four villagers you make two for the four villagers yeah I see but I mean you could still have two villagers on either side and it would still be pretty much uh, equal in efficiency I mean, of course you are going to be building that mill as well and if you can save the wood for a little bit later it could allow you to get up an earlier barracks perhaps um, that's the argument right yeah so I mean it's all about whether you want to get that barracks up um, faster or not of course Japanese make a great water sieve for the fact that they do have uh, that cheaper lumber and uh, mining well, uh, mills and such so a little bit of safe wood can lead for a faster feudal and faster galleys. Uh, but on land, I suppose it comes down to having a faster barracks, perhaps. Actually, right. Japanese on water are excellent, uh, not only because of the uh, the cheap mills, but also their fishing ships are super powered. And their team bonuses, the galleys, get uh, a much larger line of sight. Yeah. Which obviously going to help out a lot in terms of, uh, what's it called, uh, scouting. Oh, yeah. So right now, what fight to engage, what fight to run from? Yeah, exactly. Um, right now, we can see Paladin just taking his second ball, Viper as well, but slightly sooner on that ball. Once again, getting that slightly earlier. But Paladin already with that barracks going up. The Viper now, no barracks going up just yet, but it will certainly be on the way because he is sending a villager over to mine some gold right now. Pretty strong indicator of a rush from both of them. Um, yeah. You know, micro. Actually uh, before we go, uh, I wanted to talk about the map a little bit. Uh, so uh, I just clicked Fog of War and I saw Paladin's map. Paladin's map is by far superior to Vipers. Oh yeah, much it's better. It's great wood and it's very wallable. Mm -hmm. uh, it's perfect for a deer rush and then for a castle. I... I, the, the only, I'm sorry, the only um, thing I would do different with pa as Paladin is the palisade he made above the gold. I would make it uh, connecting the two woods rather than cutting in. Because this way, if you put in some crossbows, you'll be able to reach the gold. Whereas yeah, before, you would not have been able to. 
That is true. One thing I noticed though, Paladin sent over three villagers to gold straight away. He's actually going to invest a little bit more in militia it seems. Instead of doing standard three, he might add in a couple more. And that'll be really interesting to see how many more he does add in. Because of course the more he has, the more worthwhile I suppose that mana arms upgrade is going to become. Especially with the, uh, the bonus that they get in their attack speed. So... Interesting that Paladin's doing that, and do you think perhaps he's going for a few extra militia knowing that he's got such an easy wall here? Uh, yeah, I think he wants to win the... that's definitely part of it. He also wants to win the militia war. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing to note is where he picked the gold. He picked the gold not from the same gold mine, but from two different ones. Uh, the reason why he did this is scouting information. Whenever you're scouting, you always yeah. check the gold. And usually you press it, you see, oh, 20 gold taken, yep, it's a deer rush with that. And it's easy to misclick and see the same thing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's if he clicks on one, he might just think, oh, okay, 20 gone. Uh, but if he clicks on both, then he might realize, of course, Viper's scout there might just see that. And that's going to be, if he has I, noticed, a good indicator. I doubt he's going to notice it because it's too easy to misclick. Mm, and is, especially how is. fast Viper is playing. I mean, Viper uh, likes to move the screen around a lot. Yeah. So he'll check the gold and he'll check one, and then he might feel like he misclicked on the other gold. Maybe, maybe, but either way, we're going to see Paladin come in right now. Worth noting, Paladin did lose his scout to Viper's TC, which is certainly oh, not an man. ideal loss uh, when you're doing a, a, a militia rush. But the Viper's scout is over in Paladin's base right now, so unable oh, to... Oh, that one him. militia. Yeah, Viper could have killed oh. that one militia if he attacked with everything. Yeah, he could have done. Getting, obviously, caught up there, again, uh, bumping into them. Um... So yeah, I, I feel that Paladin there, if he'd have not lost his scout, it would have gone a little bit better for him. And Viper right now, he's still taking a little bit of gold. So yeah, he's actually adding in another couple of militia right now. Gonna send that forward. And four villagers by the looks of things going forwards as well. Gotta be careful though, one villager getting very low right he's there. He's gonna lose that oh, villager. No, that's not ideal. Oh man. Okay, so one villager down and already Paladin's drush is worthwhile. Um, Viper's actually playing it like a Fonito style, so he's going up really quickly and he's going to add archers and men arms right away. So Viper's going really aggressive because he knows his map is really weak. Yeah, that's exactly the kind of play I like to see from him as well. Um, just really aggressive play. Uh, so there we go, up to Feudal right now. Uh, there's the Mana Arms upgrade straight away. And of course, three forwards villagers. So perhaps, yeah, we'll see Archery Range on the front. Uh, totally right in that respect. And that, of course. Take a look at the forward wall of Paladin. That little palm forest tree, Viper's going to cut it down yep. and build a palisade and go in. Oh, yes. That's cool. <laughs> You've got to love that. It's, I was going to say, this is, of course, yep. going to force Paladin back to his base as well. So there we go. That's... Oh, man. Villager chopping in. And this is the way I see Viper do so much. But there we go. The wall hop. And in he goes. Uh, of course, he's going to have an attack bonus here as well, going downhill. So that Villager going down so quickly. And uh, Viper's going to get that before it gets back to the TC, even in terms of Villager's lost. And Paladin now, not even into the Feudal Age yet. And Viper's coming forwards. Watchtower on the front, mana arms are in, and this the tower is exactly... Is, uh, tower is good, but it's a little bit uh, too eager. I think he it should have gone a little bit forward. I think it's good because uh, it's going to deny Paladin gold right there. Uh, sorry, not gold, stone. The stone, But yeah. at the same time, you say, yeah, it's quite far forwards. I think, though, that Viper here, though, is in a good position. Of course, he has done that mana arms upgrade. Going to make it a lot easier to take out villagers. And these villagers here from Paladin uh, are taking the deer very easy pickings if he goes over there. Oh, Mana Arms upgrade done for Paladin, but I think that was a massive waste of resources there. He lost them before the upgrade really kicked in, and they really Absolutely. didn't do anything. He should have ran and then engaged. It was a mistake on his part, definitely. Certainly, and uh, Viper now just going to try and defend this tower where he can. Losing those Mana Arms so quickly to the uh, towers of Paladin though, which is not ideal. And no, I think he not should, a good move. He might lose, he might lose his uh, tower here if he's not careful. He's not walled around it, so that's kind of a big deal. Oh, actually, I think what happened is... Uh, no, never mind, he's still pushing. But he's not making archers, which is uh, a mistake. It's definitely a mistake. He should be making archers. Yeah, he's got gold for it, so I mean, there's no reason not to. And he's certainly not saving that gold for the Castle Age upgrade. He's too far away in terms of food. Um, right now, though, we're going to lose that tower. But he is he does have this hill. So, I mean, attacking downhill uh, on these mana arms should make it slightly easier for him as well. But Paladin, Again, two it's towers. the map. The map, uh, Paladin has a great map. So even though he uh, is, in theory, in a losing position, uh, the map is going to let him... Uh, 
come right back into it. Yeah. And uh, one thing you should do though is save those uh, the deer hunters. It's yeah too easy to lose them. I was gonna, I said that earlier. I mean, if Viper goes down there, they're easy pickings for him. But um, <laughs> not his opponent there. He actually went over and walled that palisade up. Um, so he's actually walled Viper in. And if Viper doesn't isn't able to reinforce this enough, then he could end up losing his villagers in here as well. But I think he's gonna get out just fine right now. The other thing is also a lot of players they think that uh, if one place is walled, it means everything is walled. Hmm. Whereas Viper can easily walk around just to the left of it. Oh yeah, just to, well down to the south of it, yeah, um, and go for these villages down here. Paladin right now only just getting up an archery range. I mean, he actually has spent quite a bit of resources on those mana armors there, actually losing most of them, and he's going to be quite slow to actually start massing up skirmishes and archers right here because of course only just getting that archery range down now compared to the Vipers too, which he's had for a little while already. Oh man, Vipers should totally palisade this uh, this archery range in, that would be great. He could do it as well. He should, absolutely. He's trying to find those villagers that he saw running. Yeah, Paladin's going to move down here with that lumber camp and do that right there. Um, yeah, I, I, Viper could end up taking this archery range with his villagers anyway, I mean, if he just keeps attacking it. I really feel like he should palisade it up, though. Um, absolutely. No, palisading it is absolutely yeah. the right move. I mean, there's nothing that Paladin could do to stop him from doing that. I mean, he's already got the advantages uh, in terms of numbers. He's got Fletching done as well, which is going to obviously just help him out a little bit more. Perhaps he's not even going to palisade it. Perhaps he's just going to demolish it. I don't know. It seem he seems to be un undecided. If he's not careful, he could lose his villagers here, so got to be very careful. The skirms are shooting uphill. Uh, the only real danger for the villagers is the man at arms, but again, they're yeah. fighting it downhill. Yeah. So, and the villagers are in full health, so it's still should be able to deal with that. Um, yeah. Okay, another tower from the Viper right now. Interesting that he's decided to put it there. Um, that's kind of weird. I, uh, do you, Do you have any ideas why he might have put that tower there? I don't think it's the reason really why he's putting the tower there is to secure the hill and to secure the uh, just the farmland by the mill. Um, it's not an ideal spot, it's not the ideal placement. Uh, ideal placement would be uh, down to the right between the gold and the blue wall. Right, I see, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree with you there. I mean, he might be able to reach the uh, lumber camp and he'd deny that gold as well. Looks like he's going to focus on that archery range now. And Paladin did send a counter over, pardon me, to uh, Viper's base here, but Viper is fully walled up, so. I highly yeah. doubt he's going to be able to do much there, especially with only skirms and a couple of mana arms. This archery range then for uh, Paladin is going to go down. Another one going up right by his TC, another two in fact. But in terms of numbers, Paladin falling pretty low behind uh, Fabio. Have a quick look, 16 ranged for the Viper, 6 for Paladin. And you know, that's quite a big difference. Especially, you know, when these archers are going to make very short work of any uh, villages that you might have. Yeah. So uh, the one thing also to note is Paladin is going Skirms. Skirms, they take food, mm -hmm. uh, so he's going to have a later castle time than Viper. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, getting that castle time is so crucial. Something that Viper, I, I've noticed, and Jordan as well, do ever so much. They really focus on getting a fast castle time where they can. It looks like Viper's going to put up a tower as well right here on the... Wood. That's the effective tower, yeah. right. There we go. So that's going to be pretty good. I'm uh, going to deny a, a little bit of wood here from Paladin. Uh, Best part is actually Paladin does not see that tower. He doesn't no. see it being made. No idea at all. And even if he did, he wouldn't be able to get up a uh, tower in defense anyway because he has no stone income. So he's yeah. kind of screwed either way from that. I feel though that Paladin, uh, sorry, Viper now really going to be looking to get that uh, castle age upgrade as soon as he can. I'm surprised he's actually not, he's continuing to keep these villages on stone for so long. I think obviously putting those towers up going to be handy in securing some more map control. But I still feel like if he went up to the castle age sooner, he'd be in a much better position because he's already got an army advantage. He can start adding in some siege then, and that would really make the difference here. That's uh, well, kind one of thing I would I love to see is uh, two more towers on the other side. Actually, three more towers on the other side, but the by each wood. If okay, I could put up three more room. towers, that would be uh, basically the game in right there. Well, yeah, I mean, this uh, tower on that gold at the north could actually t stop him from taking the gold. And then obviously, he could probably deny him a little bit more wood if he continued to tower. Uh, but, you know, I think 
what's interesting is that Viper's kind of almost easing off on the pressure here. Of course, he's just he's continuing the archer production, but he's not really doing anything to keep pressuring the Paladin. I mean, he can he can literally just stand at the top of the hill and, and hold him in his base, but the only way he's going to really keep pressuring him is if he does go up to the Castle Age and he does get a Siege Workshop down. Focusing down this uh, wall here, though, and Paladin's going to try and wall it up behind. Viper's taking those villagers easy, no problem for him. And walking straight oh my in. God, oh, that's a gap. <laughs> that's a game. That was not a gap. How was that a gap? Man, I feel sorry for Paladin with that. I really do, because I mean that wasn't that does not look like a gap. But there we go. Yeah. Well, he would have lost either way. Oh yeah. He but would. it just accelerated. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That was mad. Uh, Viper getting in. I I swear. I mean, just looking at that, you would not be able to tell there was a gap there, aside from that stone wall that just went down. Um, man, the Viper secured that one so quickly, and I mean, played that one incredibly well. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed the fact that he used Man at Arms there and pressured with the Man at Arms. I thought that was really cool. And then obviously coming forwards with those two archery ranges paid off so much for him. So uh, there we go. Viper takes it 3-1 and next game could be the last game as well. So uh, we're going to come out right now, play.